that is a huge important step. It's a boring step. It really is. It takes a long time. But video editing is a craft. If you want to make good videos, you need to put the time into it. So start there. The most important part of video editing is arguably workflow. Now everyone's workflow when it comes to video editing is going to be different. There's different ways of doing things that suit different people. But coming up with a workflow that works for you so that you can edit your video quickly, efficient and easily not only helps to make your life much easier but also helps to improve the quality of your videos as well. So I thought I would go through my workflow that I use for creating all of my YouTube videos, all of my client work and my day-to-day -day job as well, all the way from dumping footage onto different drives and then finishing up the project with your final export as well. So hopefully it might help you out if you are looking for a new workflow or at least give you one or two new ideas that you can then take and put into your own editing workflow. Now I'm not saying my workflow is perfect, far from it. I don't think there is a perfect workflow. I think every Everyone's is completely different. Everyone has things that work better for them that don't work for other people, if that makes sense. And that's the most important thing is finding the things that work for you and then doing them yourself. It's pointless doing things that work for other people because your brain might not compute in that way. You, you might have different things that work better on your laptop, maybe you use a PC, things work differently to Mac. There's loads of different variables, it's just finding the things that work right for you and then putting them into action. So let's jump onto my Mac and take a look at my workflow. A couple of things just before we properly get into it. I use Final Cut Pro to edit, you might use Premiere DaVinci, so this might differ slightly, things might be called different things. For example, in Premiere, you organize all of your footage in bins. I'm just gonna do that inside folders in Finder because that's the way I've found works best for me using Final Cut Pro. The logic behind all of these things is exactly the same, it's just they work slightly differently. So the first thing I do when I finish shooting is I dump all of my footage from my SD cards, from whatever camera I've used, onto one of these two drives. This is a Samsung T5 and a T7. They're pretty much identical, it's just the T7 is slightly faster, but these are brilliant little SSDs. They are so fast. I would highly recommend getting one of these if you're into your video editing. I will pop a link down in the description down below, but I do all of my editing off of these drives. I highly, highly recommend them. They will make editing so much smoother for you when you start using these. But if I plug my T5 in, I have already organized some footage so I can talk you through what I do. So if we go into Finder on here and go to this hard drive and I have stuff stored on here already. So this is a couple of clients we've been working with recently, Gravitas, James Sills and Stories. Let's go into this one, the Stories for example, which is an estate agent we've been making video for them and the house is called Red Barn. And in here, I have all of my footage and I've separated this out into all of the different cameras I've used. So I used the Canon R6 and also the DJI Air 2S for some drone footage. Now you can separate this out as much as you would like. Maybe you shot over a couple of different days. You might have to add in day one and day two. You might have even more cameras. You might have different locations that you want to set your folders out into. Sometimes the more detail the better especially if you have a lot of footage and what this is doing is it means you're going to find your footage when you need it so much quicker than you would be if it was just a list of file names. That is just gonna make your life so difficult. For this shoot, all I really needed to go into was the two separate cameras because there wasn't too much footage. I knew where everything was straight away and I edited it the same day as well. But you might want to go into talking head shots, wide shots of different rooms, aerial shots or B-roll, different folders to help separate different clips. And the more time you put into this stage of your workflow will speed up the whole editing process. And here as well, you can see I have a project folder and this is where I'm going to store the actual Final Cut project library because I want to be editing off this drive. I will show you how you can do that when we open up Final Cut Pro in a minute. I edit off here so I'm not clogging up my computer with loads of different rendering files because the Final Cut project libraries can be huge. Now the first thing you want to do when you open up Final Cut Pro is to create a new library. Now I've already done it for this one but I'm just gonna 
make a new one as an example to you. So we'll open up a new library and I'm gonna call it Red Barn 2, just for example. And I'm gonna make a new folder. Again, we'll call this Red Barn 2 project, click create, and I'm gonna save it in there. And now what that has done is it has created a new Final Cut library on this SSD. But then what we can do again is go into modify settings next to storage locations. We're gonna save this, choose inside Red Barn Project 2. I've opened it up there. I should have probably opened up in this file, but it's there and I click choose. And I'm gonna do that for all of these different menus. And then what that means, everything is being saved on here. All of your render files, all of your cache files, everything is going on there. Your Mac is just doing the processing. So that is doing all of the editing work. All of the storage is here. So you're not clogging up your Mac storage, which again, is just gonna keep everything nice and clean. If you unplug this, it means you can go and plug it into another computer and carry on editing from somewhere else because this Mac hasn't got all of the data stored on it that you would need to edit. And that is exactly what I did here with this Red Barn project. So we'll go back to the original Red Barn project and we'll close that one down. So once you've got your storage location set up on your SSD, you can then start dragging footage into Final Cut Pro. And to do that, I'm gonna open up Finder again here. And I'm gonna go to where all our footage is. I'm gonna click on Canon R6, highlight it, and I'm gonna highlight DJI Air 2S. Again, as we mentioned before, you might have a number of different folders set up for different cameras, locations, different days, but I'm gonna highlight all of the ones I need where the footage is, and I'm gonna click and drag that over to this event here. And what that does is it opens up two folders, Canon R6, DJI Air 2S, where you can see all of your footage, which separates it out inside Final Cut Pro, so then you can quickly flick through all of your clips and drag them into your timeline as you need, which I've done here. This is my Red Barn project that I shot the other day. And I might do another video on editing because this isn't an editing tutorial as such, this is just a workflow tutorial. So if you are interested in seeing how I edit together my videos, let me know in the comments below and I'll get around to making a video like that as well. So once you've finished editing your project inside your timeline, the next thing to do is to export it, which is nice and easy and very quick inside Final Cut Pro as well, especially if you have one of the newer M1, M1 Pro, M2 Max. Exporting is so, so quick. We're just gonna go up to the top right, Click Apple Devices 4K. I always export in 4K because I film everything in 4K. You can change the title of the video. I'm gonna click Next. Choose where we want to save it. So I'm gonna go and save it inside Red Barn. And I have already exported this. It's called redbarn.m4v. But that is all you need to do to export your video. And then you are ready to upload that video to YouTube or to send it to your client. It is that easy. And then the final thing I do to complete my workflow, once I've finished and exported my project, I will take the footage from this SSD or this one, whichever one I'm using, and I put everything onto this huge 10 terabyte hard drive. And I don't really use this for anything other than storing past footage and past videos. I don't keep any project files. Once the project is finished, I tend to just get rid of those because they take up so much space. But I store all of my footage that I've ever shot on this 10 terabyte hard drive, as well as the completed videos. And I organize it in such a way that it is, again, very easy to find. So I'm gonna, this needs plugging in properly to the mains power, so I'm gonna plug it back in over there and I'll show you how I organize on here. So this big 10 terabyte hard drive is very noisy. You might be able to hear it whirring away down there in the corner, just like that. But if I open up Finder and then go to this 10 terabyte hard drive, you'll see I have a couple of different folders, one for YouTube, one for client. We'll just go into my YouTube one, for example. I then have it separated into years. Now I do have loads of other hard drives. This is just a fairly recent one from the last few months. I've then got it separated out into months. So 5th of this 2022, which is May, June, July, August, September, October. Let's just go into October. And then we have the last video. In fact, that's not the last video I made. I've got a couple 
of others on here that I've not yet transferred to this drive. So that might just be a good way of showing you what I do actually do. Let's just plug it in. I have these two videos that I haven't yet imported into here. So what I do when I go into months is I then separate them out into days. Now I'm not sure when I actually filmed this video, so I'm gonna go in and have a look at the footage. I shot that on the 6th of October. So I'm gonna create a new folder in here, call it 2022 October, and it is 06. And then gonna call it Apple USB-C, as that's what I call the video. And I'm gonna copy everything from there and drag it into that folder. And, and then all of the footage is there in that folder on the big hard drive for whenever I need it. Maybe I won't need it, but if I do need something, I can then go to the date that I recorded it. So I need to go into September. I can talk about my Peak Design Capture Clip. I've got all of the footage there that I shot for that video. And this is great if you're doing vlogs as well because you're vlogging because you want something to look back on in a few years time. You've got all of that footage, you can save it into files like this. It's all organized and you can see it whenever you need it. So that is my editing workflow. It's nice and simple and it does the job for me. The most important thing when it comes to editing video is just being as organized as you possibly can be with all of your footage. Because once you get into making some pretty heavy projects, you'll have footage lying around everywhere. And the last thing you want to be doing is searching around for that clip that you know you've shot but you don't know where you've saved it because you've not been organized in that first stage of the workflow. So get everything organized, then you'll just sail through everything else. It makes it so much easier. Video editing is effectively problem solving. Figuring out how you can take all of that footage that you have shot and turning it into something interesting that people want to watch that tells a story. And the more you can make that an easier process, the better and it all starts out at that very first step once you've finished shooting. People tend to just jump straight into chucking everything into Final Cut and then realizing that it's all a mess, not knowing where everything is, that is a huge important step. It's a boring step, it really is, it takes a long time, but video editing is a craft. If you want to make good videos, you need to put the time into it, so start there. So hopefully that helps you out if you're looking at developing your own video editing workflow. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What is your editing workflow? Is it similar to mine? What do you use to edit? Do you use Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, DaVinci? There's lots of others as well now, isn't there? I've lost track of them all. But yeah, let me know. Come and say hello in the comments. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it and hit that subscribe button. And I shall see you very soon in another video.